This game is a great example of how to upset a stronger player, and you can't get stronger than world champion Magnus Carlsen. There you go, that's a spoiler. But this game is a few days old. With the white pieces, we have Domaraju Gukesh, a 16-year-old Indian superstar. This was played in the Aim Chess Rapid. I'm just catching up with some of those games now. And there was, in fact, some wonderful games played. Indeed, if you haven't seen the game between Duda and Mamadjarov, which uh, Robert recorded the other day, then do take a look at that. Mamadjarov played an absolute brilliancy. And thank you very much to Robert for subbing for me while I was away for the weekend. But anyway, let's get back to this game. Gukesh against Carlsen from the Aim Chess Rapid. Carlsen playing a French. A little bit unusual, but actually I think a pretty good choice. And especially the classical variation. I had this in my repertoire for many years. So I really like it. It combines solidity. You know, you get that classic French pawn chain with dynamism because often you get very nice counterplay on the queen side so there's pressure on the pawn and white can either play bishop g5 or go e5 here e5 played by gukesh the knight comes back and you can see that now that the pawn structure is fixed that's it's like a spine in the position, very str strong, very solid. Then black can play c5 to try and attack white center. f4, that's necessary to cover this pawn. And now c5, you can see that this d pawn can't be supported by the c pawn. So this is the, 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 the soft part of white center, which black starts to attack with the knight and the pawn. Very important to get that pawn rolling before you play knight c6. And white supports that pawn. And Carlsen, I mean, there are lots of ways to play this position. You can go bishop e7, you can take on uh, d4, but Carlsen goes for quite an old continuation and just advances on the queen side immediately. This is, this is um, how I like to play the position. It's great fun. You know, you can often get this very strong initiative on the queen side. And lots of ways for white to play here. You can take, as we're about to see. You can also play a3. You can play bishop e2 or bishop d3 or swing this knight round here. I mean, well, anyway, Gukesh plays in a very straightforward way. Just eliminating one of those pawns. I mean, they do look quite scary across the position here, but of course, this helps black to develop. Bishop d3, uh, knight is looking pretty good on c5. It's bishop on a nice diagonal. And now queen b6. So this stops white from casting for the moment. Obviously, that'd be a huge discovered attack. White could castle queenside here, and I've faced that a couple of times, and it is great fun for black. You can start rolling your pawns down the board, and black has this dream attack. So Gukesh plays queen f2 instead, just blocking this diagonal and preparing to castle. b4 pushes the knight away, and then a5. Excellent strategy from black. I mean, very well known in this position. So these two pawns cramp these three pawns, but also it makes room for this bishop to enter the game. Bishop on c8 is traditionally the, the bad bishop for black. And once it comes into the game on a6, well, it's no longer bad at all. Notice that black can get away with this strategy because of this strong pawn chain. This is the French pawn chain that gives black a certain amount of stability in the center. And that's why you can afford to take the time to advance on the queen side. Castles from Gukesh, bishop a6, all according to plan. And this position has been seen a few times before. 
And if white plays quietly, then I think that's exactly what black wants. Then you can carry on with your strategy of playing on the queen side without hindrance. So for example, king h1 tucks the king out of the way, perhaps prepares to move the queen here. Then you can exchange here and just go rook b8. And now that the, the queen is protected, then the knight is free to move. And black has a very nice initiative here. This is just the kind of thing that Carlson wants. He doesn't have to be somehow very creative with his strategy and the initiative continues. So Gukesh had a think here and he came up with, I think, an excellent strategy. He starts to randomize the position. He starts to, to fight on the other side of the board. He needs counterplay desperately. So he sacrifices a pawn. Excellent stuff. Now, black does not want to castle here because then this pawn would advance and white has a wonderful attack. So pawn takes pawn. Now, if that's taken, then black just wins material using a discovered check. But that was never the intention. The idea with this pawn sacrifice is to clear this square on f4. So suddenly that knight has a really menacing square attacking this pawn, perhaps preparing e6, perhaps looking at the h5 square. And suddenly it's very tricky. Remember, at the moment, there's a pin here. So that's a bit awkward for black. Okay, first things first, this pawn needs defending. Knight e7. So the knight protects oops, protects that pawn and that pawn. So that's that's a solid move. But you can see already that black is going backwards. So that's what white wants. Now you could perhaps occupy the middle here, but well, that would be exchanged. Black can castle. So black is okay. You know, four pawns on the king side is pretty solid. So Gukesh takes, again, aggressive steps here. E6, excellent move. So he's just trying to blast through the middle and that clears space for the knight as well. Um, now, what can you do? Well, you don't really want to take this. This could be very nasty. Perhaps rook here, but it's also tempting just to play knight takes pawn. And well, if knight takes knight is impossible. You can take that. And queen takes, queen takes knight. This is already very tricky for black because rook here is coming. And you can see how the, the center has just opened. So already after e6, black has to take great care here. Um, you could just castle, but after pawn takes pawn, then knight g5, that is pretty tricky as well. You can see, you know, there are big holes in black's position. And these knights look fantastic. You know, maybe a rook's going to come here. Um, looks very difficult to defend. So Carlson played f6, and that is the best move. But it leaves that pawn embedded in the heart of black's position. And again, it's just very tricky. And here Gukesh had a bit of a think. This has actually been seen before. I don't know if he realised that. I suspect he was improvising. Um, so previously, for example, this had been seen. And then rook d1. But if black can take here, and if black can exchange queens, I mean, here, there's, I'm afraid, white can't avoid the queen exchange. But here, in this was played, played in the game. But I mean, basically, black is a pawn up here. Um, and that's safe enough. There's also rook d1. Um, and that's quite interesting. 
But after this, well, black was probably okay there as well. Gukesh found a fascinating move. He played rook c1. Not, uh, not an obvious move by any stretch. And if bishop takes... Well, I guess he was intending just to open things up for the rook. So that's that's very interesting. Carlson castled, so he gets his king out. So what is that rook doing here? Well, now we see Gukesh's idea, or another idea of the move, c3, to open up the c file to put pressure on that knight. So queen d6, queen moves away from that pin, and now knight takes bishop is a threat, so bishop takes, rook takes. Pawn takes pawn, threatening the knight. So that knight moved, attacking the queen, and queen e3. Pawn takes pawn. So we need to sort of take stock after that sort of little flurry of moves. White is still a pawn down, but it's messy. That pawn in the heart of black's position is defended by the knight, and it kind of makes black's king a little bit insecure. Although at the moment there are four pawns around the king, it's a bit annoying to have this, this position slightly open and the pawn covers this square. On the other hand, you know, black has survived that little flurry. This knight looks fantastic on e4. I mean, that is the pride and joy of black's position. And again, an interesting moment where Gukesh just doesn't bother doing anything about that pawn, but instead just plays the knight into the middle. And that does look like a fantastic square. More support for the pawn. And it sort of looms over into black's position. Rook takes a2. So now Carlson is two pawns up. And this knight starts to poke around. Knight b5. Who knows where that's going. Maybe c7. But anyway, first of all, Carlson has to think, what does he do with this queen? He puts it on e5, which looks very nice. He's beautifully centralised here. And the queen even looks down there as well. So if knight h5, which could be interesting, then queen takes b2, and that already threatens a mate in one. But Gukesh, instead of sort of thinking about defending, he piled on the pressure, rook c7. So this is why he played the knight to b5 to allow the queen to get to the seventh rank. And now we see an effect of this pawn push e6. It opened up the seventh rank, and that is very dangerous. Now, this is a big moment in the game. What do you do about that threat? What do you do about that menacing rook on the seventh rank? I'm going to have a little slurp tea. You have a little think with black. Black to play. How would you play here? Cheers. Really tricky position. And there are plenty of ways to go wrong. And Carlson found a way. Carlson played what looks like a really natural move. And... I mean, in any game of chess, it's, you know, if there's a natural move, well, normally one one plays it. And in particularly in rapid, where you can't calculate everything and you have to go on your in instincts. Carlson played rook e8, supporting the knight, which continues to block out that rook so it can't get through to g7. What could be more normal? In fact, knight g6 was the best move. Absolutely not obvious, and a, a very scary move to make in rapid play when it opens up the seventh rank. Knight h5 looks like a, a very good riposte. 
threatening that pawn on g7. No wonder Carlsen had qualms about this move. Um, in fact, f4 is a fantastic response. And if rook takes g7, queen h3, I mean, the queen, queen needs to go somewhere. Um, queen, actually, this knight needs defending. So queen h3, knight g5, now black has the initiative and a great move, f3. I mean, th these are not obvious moves. And this starts to open up the seventh rank for black. And in fact, black's pieces, incredibly, are more dangerous than white's. Uh, black is actually winning that position. I mean, there are lots of variations here, but um, it all works out beautifully. And if, if for black, if knight d3, d4, again, not an obvious move. Ignoring the threat to the, the queen and attacking this one. And then this knight attacks. So queen takes, queen b5, and actually black is winning that position. But... Yeah, you have, to, you have to calculate that perfectly, basically. And rook e8 looks like a far more sensible move, just keeping the 7th rank blocked out. But Carlsen overlooked white's next move. And, and in this complicated position, very understandable. If you haven't seen it, if you don't know the game, have a think here. What would you play with white in this position? White to play and win. Yeah, incredible. Gukesh played queen b6. And that just comes out of the blue. And incredibly, black does not have a good answer to this. So what is the point of queen b6? In fact, white now has two threats. One threat is to take on e7 and give a check here. So for example, if queen takes b2, which looks, well, potentially scary, although that pawn is defended by the knight, but, well, just for sake of illustration, rook takes knight is winning, because if rook takes, then queen d8 and make next move. Okay, so what happens if black defends against that? So what about, for example, Rook a8, covering the back rank. Now we see the second threat in the position. Knight d3. Attacking the queen. Incredibly, the queen is actually trapped. When white's queen moved to b6, it covered the e6 pawn. So white, the black queen can't take that. Well, you can see, I mean, all these squares are covered. Every single one. There is no escape for the queen. Quite remarkable <clears throat> that the queen, in the middle of the board, has no way out. I mean, it's a really unusual tactic. And, well, uh, queen b6 setting up the, these two threats is a very unusual move very very easy to overlook how powerful that is uh what else is there there's there's also knight g6 <clears throat> but this because if if knight d3 now then actually queen takes e6 but after knight g6 the seventh rank is now open and in this case Queen b7 is actually winning. White just breaks through here and there is no good defense to that. Well, Carson thought for a long time here but could only come up with knight g5. Allowing rook takes, as we've seen, if rook takes rook, then queen d8. So the rook swept over to a8. But now queen c7... And that just conquers the seventh rank. Um, queen exchange, of course, is absolutely hopeless. White is a piece up, and that pawn is very strong. Carlson played a check, but after king h1, he just resigned this position. <clears throat> For example, I mean, he's completely lost. If rook a1, then 
This leads to a forced checkmate. Rook takes pawn check. Knight takes knight g6. And queen f7 is checkmate. There you go, that pawn on e6 helping out very well in that position, supporting the queen. I, I really like the spirit in which Gukesh played that game. You know, he's just not afraid of Carlson's reputation. You know, he didn't do something safe here. F5 was a really enterprising sacrifice and then pushing on with e6 again just created a position which is well irrational non-standard unorthodox where carlson just can't fall back on the the familiar familiar strategies he's just got to think and in those complications something very nice turned up for gukesh brilliant victory by the way uh, i should let you know that uh, my Kalashnikov course on Chessable and my other course is actually also on sale as a Halloween sale. So if you're interested in that, then do check it out. It's a wonderful opening for black. Thanks for watching.